Hello, data pros, and welcome back to another exciting video in our Databricks learning series. In our previous video, we explored how to securely store passwords and other sensitive details in your Databricks notebooks using Azure Key Vault. Today, we're shifting our focus to dive into various approaches for efficiently ingesting data into Databricks. In many projects, raw data is often made available in cloud storage locations like Azure Data Lake, AWS S3, or Google Cloud Storage. Data engineers build EEL pipelines to ingest this data into Databricks tables, often loading it into the bronze layer with minimal or no processing. One of the simplest methods to ingest data is using the copy into command. This allows you to load data directly into Databricks tables from cloud storage. Let's see this in action. Before using the copy into command, ensure that the target table is already created. We've previously discussed how access control for storage locations works in one of our videos. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out the video link in the description. Now let's run this copy into command. This clearly shows the number of records loaded into the table. Databricks internally tracks the file load history. This ensures that each file is loaded only once. When rerunning the copy into command, only new files will be processed. If no new files are present, the command will perform a dry run. We shall query the target table to see the loaded records. Generally, there are two different approaches followed in the medallion architecture. If the file format is well-defined, consistent, and one of the supported types, you can unpack the fields and load them into the bronze layer. That's what we have done in this example. On the other hand, if you prefer to store the raw files as is, you can read them in binary file format, in which case the entire file will be stored as a single column in the target delta table. I have deleted the target table, recreated it, and reloaded it with the binary file format. Let's see how the data looks in the table now. You can cast the binary field to a string to check its original contents. Ideally, you'll need to unpack the individual columns from it in the silver layer later. You can schedule and run this notebook at regular intervals to keep your data up to date. This approach with a copy into command provides a quick start and is most effective for batch loading files from cloud storage locations. Now, how do we handle real-time and near-real-time data ingestion? This brings us to our next data ingestion approach, structured streaming. Structured streaming is part of the open source Spark engine and is a powerful, customizable tool for processing data in real time. It supports a variety of input sources, including cloud storage locations, Kafka, event hubs, and even other Databricks tables. In this notebook, we're reading data from an Azure storage location, performing some basic transformations, and loading the data into a Databricks table. Unlike regular notebooks, this runs continuously and processes files as they arrive in the source location. This checkpoint location is where Databricks tracks the files processed so far. It ensures that each file is processed exactly once, even if the job is stopped and restarted, or if the job is restarted after a failure. I have uploaded all these notebooks to GitHub and provided the link in the description. Please feel free to copy them from there as needed. Next, let's talk about Autoloader. Databricks created Autoloader as an extension of structured streaming to optimize performance, especially for large-scale incremental ingestion of files from cloud storage. It also includes powerful features like schema evolution and improved fault tolerance. In this notebook, we're using Autoloader, and as you can see, the cloud files keyword tells Databricks to use Autoloader for file ingestion. Just like structured streaming, it runs continuously and processes files as they arrive in the cloud storage. Please assume that the order files are created in my cloud storage location. As you can see, these files are being loaded into the bronze table in real time using the autoloader job. Autoloader supports two modes for detecting new files, 
Directory Listing and File Notification In directory listing mode, Autoloader scans the input directory to identify new files. It's the default mode and allows you to get started quickly with minimal configuration needed. File Notification mode, on the other hand, uses your cloud infrastructure's storage notification services to detect new files. While this requires additional permissions and setup, it reduces the overhead of directory scans and is more efficient for high-frequency or large-scale ingestion. Just before, in our demo, we use directory listing mode because it's easy to set up and works well for our needs. We'll dive deeper into file notification mode in a future video. Finally, I want to show you how you can access data from external database systems. Databricks makes this process easy by supporting connections to many external databases, including MySQL, PostgreSQL, Snowflake, Redshift, and more. To enable read-only querying of external datasets using Lakehouse Federation, you need to create two things, a connection and a foreign catalog. A connection is a securable object within Unity Catalog that specifies the server details and credentials for accessing an external database system. The foreign catalog, on the other hand, acts as a metadata layer, representing the structure of your external database within Databricks. It doesn't mirror or replicate the data itself. Instead, the data stays in the external system and only the necessary data is transmitted when you run a query, ensuring efficient access without duplication. With this setup, you can securely query external data directly from your Databricks workspace, leaving the data in its original location. Let's set this up in our Databricks environment. First, head over to Catalog and create a connection. Once the connection is created, it's time to create an external catalog. Now that both the connection and catalog are set up, go ahead and verify if the newly created external catalog is listed in your Databricks workspace. Copy one of the table names and check if you can query the data from it. Perfect, everything works as expected. As you can see, I've used this approach to load customer data from Postgres to the Databricks bronze layer to enable efficient data analytics. In addition to customer tables, I've also brought in product-related dimension tables using the same approach. Please feel free to check the link in the description for the complete code line for the same. That's all for now, and please stay tuned for our next video, where we'll dive into more exciting Databricks features. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. Thanks for watching.